from the worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all mothers and mother of Christ Mary. Uh, a few announcements before we begin. We open the bulletin to follow along and participate in worship today. It's available online on our webpage as well as on our Facebook page. Uh, please note there will not be Zoom fellowship time today. Uh, also note that church office will be closed on Tuesday and Wednesday due to parking lot construction. Staff will be working from home on those days and are available by email as well. Uh, lastly, please consider signing up to provide special music during worship uh, in the coming weeks and months over the summer. Uh, there's a link to an online sign up uh, in your bulletin, or you can call the church office or email our church office. Please consider sharing the musical gifts uh, with us uh, as we have an extended community uh, at this time of year to worship the Lord. All right, I think that's all I have as far as announcements. So let us now center ourselves and prepare ourselves for worship by turning to the confession of faith for David. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 7. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he died. Holy wisdom, holy words. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. 
Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Holy wisdom, holy words. We prepare to hear the gospel verse by singing the Alleluia. Please stand as you're able. The Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I have memories of Saturday mornings gathered around the breakfast table with my family. We would either have pancakes or waffles, and we would sit together in our PJs or our grubby housework clothes. We would eat and talk and ease into the day. And then, without fail, my dad would say, 
So what's the plan for today? And the easing into the day was over. Now it was time to make a plan. Who had what going on? Who was in charge of what chores, et cetera, et cetera. On more than one occasion, my mom would even get out her pen and notepad making lists for each one of us. So what's the plan for today? It's become clear to me that this need for a plan has stuck with me as my three-year-old daughter has recently been going around saying, that's the plan, that's the plan. I'd like to think it's because I recognize young children need structure, and so I often talk her through the plan before we enact it. So here's the plan, Emery. We're going to eat breakfast, put on our clothes, brush our teeth, and then go to school. But maybe I just have a deeply embedded love for a good plan, which ultimately feeds my need for control. Maybe it's not me being an intentional mother after all, but some, something instilled in me on many a Saturday morning during my childhood, now creeping into my child's childhood. It's true that I do love a good plan. Don't we all? And isn't that exactly what we're craving so deeply right now? A plan? A way forward? A step-by-step guide to reopening, to moving the dials, to returning to normal? We want a set-in-stone plan, something that says, on this day, restaurants can open. On this day, you can schedule a haircut. On this day, it will be safe to worship together again. And on this day, we'll have a vaccine, and this whole thing will be behind us. We want a plan, and we want to be confident in the plan that if we do these things and we take these steps, we will be safe. Our loved ones will be safe. A plan will help us overcome or avoid the virus. A plan will help us re-engage with life as we have come to love it. A plan will save us. Or so we think. But the truth is much more complicated than that. The truth is that there is too much we still don't know for any plan to actually make sense. The truth is that the dials will turn and then return and then turn and then unturn. The truth is that dates will be set and then reset. The truth is that things we thought were part of the plan might not become as essential to the plan as we originally thought. The truth is that no plan can lay out exactly what needs to be done to keep us healthy and safe because there is too much we don't know and what we do know continually changes. The truth is that no plan can make us immune to this virus or enable us to outrun it. A plan cannot save us because a plan requires certainty and a control that we simply do not have. Welcome to being human. We want certainty and we want control. We want to be able to say, that's the plan. And yet we cannot. In reality, we are powerless over most things and much of our lives are unmanageable. People working the 12 steps know this, which is why admitting powerlessness is step number one. It's the most important thing. Our illusion of control is just that, an illusion. We are powerless over most things, and much of our lives are unmanageable. When the virus first gained traction here in the United States, I remember talking to my sister about the inherent risks that come with being human. And I remember the two of us sharing our fear that we would forget, humans would forget, that life is full of risks. Being human is full of risks. Being in relationship is full of risks. We can minimize them, certainly, and set up precautions and take seriously recommendations, but we cannot avoid risk. We cannot protect ourselves from everything, much as we might like to. There is no plan that will keep us safe or save us. Welcome to being human. 
To be alive is to manage risks, give up control, and admit that there is no plan with the power to save. But this is hard to do. Our needs for self-preservation and control are so great, it is hard to acknowledge powerlessness and risk. It is hard to give up our love of a plan. Even the disciples of Jesus, those who lived with him and traveled with him and knew him better than anyone else, even the disciples of Jesus were concerned about self-preservation and control. Even the disciples of Jesus loved a good plan. It's why after Jesus has shared a final meal with them and washed their feet and foretold his own betrayal and said to them, I am leaving and where I am going, you cannot come, they ask, well, where are you going and how do we get there? What are the next steps? What is the plan? The disciples can't fathom a reality in which Jesus dies and leaves them alone and left to their own devices. They need a plan to guide them, steps they can take in Jesus' absence, and if this, then this kind of cheat sheet for life without Jesus. The disciples have this deer in the headlights look about them, so Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you, and then I will come and I will take you to myself so that where I am, you will also be. You know the way to the place where I am going. It's Thomas who finally speaks out. He says, we don't even know where you're going. How can we possibly know the way? You've left no map. No plan. In response, Jesus doesn't say, oh, I left instructions with the women. He doesn't say, plug it into Google Maps. He doesn't say, oh, you're right, here's the plan. No, Jesus responds to the disciples' human need for control and for certainty and for a plan by saying, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He might as well have added, I am the plan. The disciples wanted a plan for how to move forward. We want a plan for how to move forward. But what Jesus gives us is himself. Jesus gives us himself. He is the plan. He is the way. Jesus gives us his life in which love of neighbor is the highest good and all are welcome in the kingdom of God. Jesus gives us his death where suffering is not something to be rejected but has the power to transform and forgiveness is the final word. Jesus gives us his resurrection, life triumphing over death, uniting us with God forever. We want a plan, but instead we have Jesus who gives himself for us freely, who prepares a place for us with God, who walks beside us and goes before us, who abides with us and promises to never leave us. This is Jesus. This is the way. It is full of risk. It is full of things we cannot control. It is full of confusion and pain and uncertainty. But it is full of freedom, of life, of peace, of belonging, of love. We want certainty and we want control. We want to be able to say that's the plan and yet we cannot. It's frustrating, I know. Remember, I love a good plan. We might not have that, but we have Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, who walks with us in risk. Jesus, who brings the certainty of love and forgiveness and grace into the uncertainty of everything else. Jesus, who promises life eternal, a place in God's forever home. 
which is beyond our control, thank God. Life is and will continue to be full of risk and uncertainty and the inability to control our circumstances. We would be foolish to think otherwise. But Jesus is with us on the way. Jesus is the way. The only way that really matters. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the offering. You are uh, invited, encouraged to give either online or by sending in your offering uh, to our office by mail. Thank you for your continued generosity. Uh, We continue now with children's time with Pastor Ashley. All right, well, gather closer if you haven't already. So when a new baby is born, people are very quick to ask, who does he look like? Who does she resemble? As moms and dads and grandparents and aunts and uncles, we're looking for similarities. We're looking to see ourselves in this new little human And what's crazy to me is that this changes constantly. Babies and young kids in general look like one person one day and one person the next. And it's fun to see the changes over time. Today sometime you should ask your parents who you looked like when you were born and who do you look like now? So many of you know my daughter, Emery. I mentioned her in my sermon earlier. She just turned three. And if you were looking at us today, you might not think that we look too much alike. But when you see pictures of me when I was her age, well, see for yourself. So here is a picture of me as a newborn. And here's a picture of Emery when she was a newborn. Definitely my child, right? Especially like in the eye and nose situation. All right, and here's a picture of me when I was probably like four or five. And here's a picture of Emery from recently. She's just about three. Right? 
we look alike, a lot alike. And it will be fun to continue to see how she changes and if the similarities continue or if at some point we diverge and suddenly it's like, who is this child? Who knows? Who knows what will happen? Well, in our gospel reading for today, the disciples are confused because they want Jesus to show them God. And Jesus is like, are you kidding me? Look at me, I'm right here. Which means God, the Father, is right here. I look just like him. I act just like him. My words and my mannerisms, they're the same. Jesus is saying, I resemble my Father. So if you've seen me, you've seen him. Jesus is God on earth, and so to see Jesus is to see God. Kind of like to see Emery at three is to see me at three. There's a shared resemblance. So if people see God when they look at Jesus, I think the question we can ask is who do people see when they look at us? And I don't just mean they see your mom's eyes or your dad's smile. Do people see God when they look at me, too? Or at you, too? I hope so. I hope I'm reflecting God in my words and my actions, and that when people see me, they say, oh, maybe I've seen a little something of God in that person. So what kinds of things do you think we can do to reflect God's love in our words or our actions? Nobody here is giving me any answers. So why does Pastor Jason get responses when he asks questions? And when I ask questions, no one says anything. Look alive, people. There are lots of ways that we can reflect God's love through our actions and words. Today is Mother's Day, and so maybe, kids, you can write a nice note to your mom, or you can make her some lunch to show her God's love. We can be kind to one another and patient, and that's a way of showing God's love. Right? When all of this is over, we can invite others in to our homes, hopefully, and feed them, which is a way of showing God's love. In this time, you can make donations to a food shelf or deliver some groceries to a neighbor in need. There are lots of things that we can do to reflect God's love, and I hope that we do them so that when people see us, they see God. All right? All right. You can go back to your seats. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, Mother in God, as living stones united in your spiritual house, Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Guide all leaders to lead with compassion and honesty as they lead in this time of pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, Help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We pray especially for Paul Skoglund, the family of Dwayne Skoglund, those experiencing COVID-19, and those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the light of God surround us, the love of God enfold us, and the presence of God watch over and protect us. For wherever we are, our God is also there. We close as we began in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our mission hymn, verses 3 and 4 of hymn number 619. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia.